This is the PCC Cup Series. I'm your host, Syzygy, and this is race 24 of 25 in the round of South Carolina, a throwback race to all who came before us at the Darlington Raceway. Taking his first career pole is Ike Durbin in the number two for Manticore Engineering, the points leader who is trying to put a distance between himself and second place in points, Ben Atkins. As the starting grid scrolls on the bottom, we'll show you some action from the PCC trucks and PCC lights races, which occurred earlier in the week. Ryan Jeffries took the pole in the PCC trucks race. He's already locked himself into a promotion position. Last promotion spot, Isaac Michaels gets involved in a crash with Daniel Ecklater, and that's really going to hurt his chances into getting into the PCC light series. But Will Crawford would make a last lap pass on Dale Kensington Jr. and take the win. Only Ryan Jeffries and Vinny LaBeouf are left in the championship hunt. In the light series, Sam Burkhart leads the field to the green flag. He's second in points, but there'd be a big accident with Patrick O'Hannigan. Lots of cars involved there, and O'Hannigan's going to go over onto his lid. He'd get that car running, but would break down later in the race. Pull down into Dean Wormer there, and that'd be the end of his day. That's a big hit from Tiffany Matthews and Isaac Parsons. He'd almost go over again. But Denny Adams would take the win in the number 25 for DJ Motorsports. And there are six cars left in the championship hunt going into the last race. Dustin Oliver, Sam Burkhart, Lenore Scurry, Jeff Fisher, James Beverly, and Damon Jones all battling for the championship in the PCC Light Series. And with that, Ike Durbin, in his Global Racing League throwback, is going to lead the field to the green flag on the inside of Ian Elias there. Down into turn number one, Durbin gets a good run. He's going to pull away from the Paloma Autosport teammates of Lenny Jacobs and Ian Elias down into the backstretch. Ike Durbin came into this race with a full race lead over Ben Atkins, but with Cleveland being a double points race, he's going to have to still work to gain that ground to make sure that he locks up the championship here once and for all. Going further back in the pack, Ramsey Cockener has already lost the draft. No surprise there. The Nice Cock Racing team qualified in the last three positions, and they're running in the last three on track right now. Here is James Beverly making his long-awaited PCC Cup Series debut in his Mike Smith 1982 championship car. Uh, that is his tribute, but James Beverly taking over for the concussed uh, Kelly Blackwater, who was injured at Charlotte, doing pretty well, running up in the top 20 right now. Here's Ben Atkins debuting. Apparently he didn't get the memo. He decided, his team decided to debut their 2017 cars instead of running throwbacks. He calls it a throw forward. He's running in 13th right now, losing ground to uh, Ike Durbin. Now here's Lenny Jacobs having an excellent run. He's up in second place best run since he came back after being injured at 8 Bull earlier in the year, and he's slowly been chipping away at Ike Durbin's lead. Now there's some rumors that he might not be back in this car at the end of the season. His contract is set to expire, uh, but he has not expressed whether or not he's going to pursue other opportunities in the future. James Hugh at third in points, trying to make a move on the inside of uh, Ian Elias there, the Phantom Trigger car uh, that James Hewitt is driving. Uh, he'll be running this scheme next year, it looks like, and he's in fourth place trying to remain relevant in this championship battle. He's third in points. As the field cycles through, you get a good view of uh, just how these cars are running. John Jefferson up in uh, up in the top ten. He's in sixth, and Donnie Olson in ninth. So the Steffens Racing car is putting on a good show here today. Focusing on Donnie Olson running his uh, 2006 Texas winner scheme. Uh, he got his first win in this car, and He's holding off a challenge there from Brian Gallagher, who looked very strong at Charlotte and has looked very strong at all of these uh, shorter speedways. Ramsey Cockner going a lap down on lap 13, so that just tells you how slow that he is. And that's going to let Lenny Jacobs take the lead there on the inside, and he slaps the wall, Ramsey Cockner does, and he's going to let the leaders go by on the inside. That car is not handling very well. As Lenny Jacobs... Uh, Best run so far uh, since he's come back from injury. He has pulled a gap on Ike Durbin there and continues to hold the lead. As we look at Andy Lambert, who's running the scheme that he debuted in in 2000, running right behind the scheme that uh, John Jefferson debuted in in, I believe, 2003. And they're both having very strong runs up in the top 10. Caution one would fly 
very early on in this race on lap 19. Akio Gifu is reporting a tire going down on that 466 car. He's going to pull to the inside, but Gaspar de Souza is there and they're going to make some contact. Pushes him low there on the apron. De Souza would scoot by, but that hold up uh, Clay Gibson in the 77. That's the SCRA uh, throwback scheme. But trying to pull down to the apron. Joe Craig is there, and that's going to put Ryan Matthews into the wall. That's a lot of damage to Kale Burnfart Jr. Tough break for the uh, Kale Burnfart Senior tribute scheme there. And uh, Kale Burnfart Jr. is going to be the first retirement from the race and not doing his father proud by wrecking there early on in Darlington. And Ben Atkins is going to have a problem. Tire going down on that five car and uh, he'd have to pull into the pits and he would lose two laps in the process trying to get that uh, car jacked up. Lenny Jacobs would lead over Louis Ballard on the restart. You've got Ike Durbin back there in eighth place. He had a pretty bad pit stop under that caution cycle and Lenny Jacobs gets a good run down into turn number one but it wouldn't matter because we'd get a caution on lap 26 just a couple laps after the restart as Cameron Taylor in the Troy Griffith Championship scheme spins Dan Ferre into James Beverly. Both cars go spinning towards the apron, uh, but they wouldn't hit anyone else aside from each other and they'd continue on without much damage. Lenny Jacobs relinquishes the lead under caution. You see Andy Lambert and Mark Burt pitting there to Louis Ballard who would bring the field down, but Tom Wilson driving the Chaparral Camaro scheme that his grandfather pioneered back in the 60s and 70s is going to pull to the inside there and with help from Ike Durbin is going to pass the GRL car of Louis Ballard and take the lead for himself. You see there, throwback schemes up in the top five. It's a beautiful sight, but Tom Wilson having his best run since uh, eight bull, I believe, was the last time that he led, but uh, he's been very consistent in the championship. He's up in the top six, five or six in points, and he's looking at third place right now, possibly by the end of the season, if he keeps this up. Ian Elias back there in third place running a, jo running a uh, Joga Lake scheme. Uh, now, Joga Lake was a park that was owned by Cedar Fair, his sponsor. Closed down in 2008, and he wanted to do tribute to them by running this scheme here. Smith sandwiched in between two GRL cars. We've got a Pokemon Red and Blue scheme here with uh, Brian Gallagher, who's making a pass work on the outside of Ike Durbin. You don't see that every day, but he's very strong on uh, a lot of these ovals that we've run on. He's won at Rockingham, he's won at Indy, nearly won at Charlotte, won at Phoenix, and now he's looking to win here at Darlington. Now this is uh, Preston Bell running in 12th place. He is the worst running of the Steffens Racing cars. Now, Steffens Racing has been stuck in relegation for about half the season, but apparently the series didn't put enough dirt on them because they're trying to dig themselves out of that hole with a big run here today as you've got Kurt Pliskin running in 16th. He is the best running of the Accelerator Motorsports cars. Now, they fell to last place in the team standings after Charlotte, and it looks like they might fall even further behind here if uh, 16th is the best that they can muster with Kurt Pliskin in his Danger Mouse throwback scheme. As uh, Gaspar de Souza, running a non-throwback this week, uh, suffers a mechanical failure, and uh, his championship season has gone off the rails. It looked like he was going to contend for the championship in the middle of the season, but consistent mechanical woes are going to put him out of it, as uh, he's going to lose multiple laps here. As Tom Wilson, man, he is pulling away from Louis Ballard in that GRL car back there, and look, you see there Gaspar de Souza coming out of the pits, but this is his best run in a while. He's been consistently rattling off top tens on some of the road courses and uh, ovals, and his season has really come together. Clay Gibson here, as he passes Scott Wollen, who's breaking down, is up in, uh, I believe he's in uh, 18th place. That's a good run for Clay Gibson, who's starting to get a handle on these ovals running the SCRA 2008 championship scheme for Clayson Enterprises is Tom uh, Delgado running right behind uh, Jerry Might. That's four position. He's in 23rd. Casey Lester and Chris Benson in their throwback schemes in 24th and 25th. Uh, Duncan Cobb running the 2009 SCRA championship scheme for Clayson Enterprises in 26th. You've got Greg Woodard back there in his first ever scheme running in 28th. And uh, if you look further back, you've got uh, Ben Worthington there in, I believe, 30th place, running a great ghost throwback. And uh, we've got Alex Phillips, who's been struggling all day. He got stuck behind uh, some of the slower cars, and he's running at about 35th right now. 
as Tom Wilson puts uh, Ramsey Cockner another lap down. Uh, that car is way off the pace, but it looks like that Ike Durbin has started to close the gap just a bit. He's going to pull up on his bumper there. Frank Azzaretto having another strong run. Now, at the midpoint of the season, he was down in 36th in points, but he's worked his way back up into the top 20, and uh, he's running up in the top 10 right now, having a great show. He's in fifth, actually, on lap 45. This is a 147 lap race, but... Frank Azzaretto showing some muscle here early on and uh, that he belongs in the series. And Sapphire Anderson in another non-throwback is going to suffer a tire going down on that V car and she's going to pull her car to the pits and get that fixed. Uh, going to go two laps down in the process. As Ike Durbin made an attempt to pass uh, Tom Wilson there, but he's right on Wilson's bumper. But Wilson is just fast enough that he's able to hold him off. But these two have separated themselves from everyone else. You see there, that's a pretty big gap that they've pulled. Uh, but these two drivers running up in the top 10 in the championship and now on track as well. Ike Durbin doing what he can to maintain his championship gap, but we've gonna we're going to have a caution on lap 51. Ramsey Cockner is going to hit the wall going three wide, comes down into Greg Woodard. He's going to drive away, but behind, a melee is going to ensue. As Greg Woodard struggles to hold on to that car, he's going to collect a few more cars. Going on board with Woodard here and his uh, Lycoya. And you just see there that hit the wall. He drifts up the track, hits the wall there. Bounces down into Ben Atkins, comes up into Ryan Matthews. And that's going to be a few more cars involved as Woodard struggles to maintain control of his number 41 Lycoya. Going on board with Lenny Jacobs, who we saw leading earlier in this race. Just see there, gets caught on the outside. Woodard swings across the track, and there's Ryan Matthews pulling into him. He's going to go low, and that's that's James Hewitt who's smoking down there, going on board on the Phantom Trigger car. And uh, Ben Atkins is involved, second place in points. He swings low, and that's going to do a lot of damage to the, uh, to the suspension on that car and put him out of the race. And that's going to be the end of the championship for James Hewitt, but Ben Atkins is going to continue on. Uh, see there, Andy Lambert's involved, Daniel Sharp. Alex Phillips, and to make matters worse for Greg Woodard coming into the pits, he hits the pit wall, ending a miserable race for him. He's had a miserable season. And Sapphire Anderson was on the tail end of the lead lap there. She's very off the pace. As you can see, uh, she's already about half of a corner behind the rest of the leaders as they come off there. And uh, looks like Tom Wilson's going to fend off a challenge from Louis Ballard there on the bottom. The bottom through three and four doesn't have as much grip coming off, which means that Wilson running the top is going to have the advantage. Israel Bruce suffering a mechanical failure brings his number 15 car into the pits. Uh, one of those throw forward cars is Cameron Taylor running the Troy Griffith 2006 championship scheme. No, we mentioned that before. He, he has worked his way up into the top 10. And uh, Cameron Taylor, he's had a great season so far, uh, despite coming in late. Uh, starting at the round of Indianapolis, he's rattled off top tens pretty consistently. And Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, who now the team has said that this is a throwback, even though they've been running it all season, and I'm kind of inclined to agree with them, uh, is up in fourth place. So he's having a great run running for his career. He doesn't have a ride lined up next season, and uh, he's trying to audition for one uh, late in the going here. Speaking of Clayson Enterprises, here's Casey Lester running his 2011 debut scheme back in 18th place right in front of Tom Delgado. Lester was announced as one of the two buyers of the Clayson Enterprises team along with Daniel Sharp's sponsor, Mr. Aid. So the team will be rebranded as Mr. Laid Motorsports, provided that they can remain in the Cup Series next year. They would have Lester and Daniel Sharp as two of their three drivers. Here's Josh Marshall pulling into the pits with a tire failure on his Australian Motorsports car. So that's two of the three Australian Motorsports cars with tire issues. Uh, tough break for Marshall. He was up in 14th place. As here is a sight we don't see too often on an oval. Jerry Myatt is in 12th place. Uh, coming to halfway as we've got... Uh, that's Alina Lazareva right behind him. And uh, Jerry Myatt doing a great job of holding off. The, some of the faster cars. He almost went a lap down in that first run, but the crew made adjustments, and uh, they were apparently to his liking because he's managed to stay up near the front of the field as Israel Bruce comes into the pits once again. They didn't fix that mechanical problem the first time, and uh, it came back, and it's been nagging him. As 
John Jefferson has managed to put together a pretty complete race. He's up in fifth place, the best running of the Stefans cars, uh, as, as we're at halfway now. And uh, John Jefferson has had a pretty rough season. He started out well and uh, fell through the ranks, but now he's trying to surge his way back up into the top 20 in points. As at halfway, Tom Wilson leads over the two uh, GRL Manticore cars of, uh, that's Louis Ballard and Ike Durbin back there. You see there, H.J. Uh, Wheat Farmer back in fourth place, but Tom Wilson having one hell of a run here today. And uh, that 31 car is looking awfully racy, uh, but he's gonna catch some lap traffic um, a few laps afterwards, and uh, oh, that's Ram that's Ramsey Cockner into the wall, but looks like Wilson's still gonna make it around. Looks like Ike Durbin making a challenge on the inside. That's Ben Atkins getting ready to go another lap down without the hood on that car, but Tom Wilson is going to stay up front for now as we've got the, the 49 car making moves on the inside. He's going to try and power his way up around. That's Louis Ballard he got around, which means that H.J. Wheat Farmer is in third. So he's trying to make a challenge for third now as this car is starting to come to, the, come to life later in the run, and he's been closing down on the leaders He's been exceptional in clearing lap traffic this 49 car has, and he's been using that to slice through the field as Tom Wilson catching uh, Chris Benson there, getting ready to put him a lap down in his uh, the Mesa Speedway car that he had run uh, prior to joining the PCC Cup Series. But, oh, that's not a lot of grip on the bottom, and he's going to struggle to pass him, Tom Wilson is, which uh, look, at, look at how much that Brian Gallagher has closed in here. Oh, that's, uh, that's a slow run that Wilson has on the inside. Three wide for the lead, and Brian Gallagher is going to take advantage of that and take the lead coming to the line. New leader, 49, Brian Gallagher, as Tom Wilson lost a ton of speed there, stuck on the bottom. Going to see why that ended up happening. Because it looks like, oh, he made contact there with, I think that's uh, Josh Marshall. He got stuck on the bottom, and Ike Durbin had to check up. So... Uh, Looks like Gallagher just took the outside, maintained his momentum, and powered around both Wilson and Durbin going into uh, going onto the front stretch. And he's already starting to extend his lead as Ike Durbin has managed to get around some of the lap cars, and Tom Wilson has not. Wilson back there, I believe, has already dropped back to fourth, if not fifth. As uh, coming to lap, Chris Benson, he's going to put up a bit a bit of a bumper there to Chris Benson, and that's going to let Ike Durbin take the lead back as he almost wrecked him there as Sapphire Anderson you saw pulling into the pits once again. Really struggling with that V-car, but Ike Durbin takes the lead back. Your championship leader out in front once again, trying to increase that gap over a struggling Ben Atkins here today. And he's going to get stuck in a lot of lap traffic. There you see Ramsey Cockner, Dan Ferrey blocking this up. And uh, that's a ton of lap traffic. And here comes Brian Gallagher with a ton of steam. He's going to pull to the inside there and pass him like uh, he's the star of a bad racing movie. As uh, Ike Durbin's line got stuck behind Ramsey Cockner, he's going to get around him there. But look at the 49 slicing and dicing through traffic like like a knife through butter. Wow. He's, he's cutting through that field like they're not even there. I mean, look at this gap that Brian Gallagher is pulling on Ike Durbin. He's stuck there behind Sapphire Anderson, but down the backstretch... Ike Durbin's not even in the camera shot anymore as he's pulled half a half a straightaway on him in just a lap as he makes a move on the outside of, uh, that's Ben Worthington in the sixth car there on the inside. But Brian Gallagher came out of nowhere to take control of this race as Dan Ferrey is the first car into the pits. That's a scheduled pit stop and in the back of the shot there you saw Preston Bell and Donnie Olsen. Stefan's Racing has all three cars up in the top ten. This is a massive performance for that team this late in the season, and uh, I don't think they're done just yet. They might stick around here next season if they keep this up, as Alex Phillips brings his car into the pits uh, from 21st. We've got, that's uh, Lenny Jacobs coming in. Alina Lazareva brings it in from 12th. She's probably the most prominent car to come in for Green Flag Pits so far. Tom Wilson comes in from 6th. You've got Andy Lambert in there. And uh, Joe Craig up in the top 10 having a good run comes into the pits. And uh, so does, that's John Jefferson. And finally, the lap after that, 
on uh, lap 118, Brian Gallagher is going to come into the pits. Ike Durbin stays out and is going to lead a lap here, but uh, he he's going to have to come into the pits here within the next lap or two because his tires are just about shot, and he would get a caution on lap 119. However, he would be the cause. Trying to pull down there on Jerry Myatt. Myatt has none of it. Spins Ike Durbin into the wall. And there's the second place car of Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer going out of the race. And Ike Durbin looked to have this championship locked up. And he drives into the pit wall with frustration. His race is done. And his championship has not been locked up. But we've got Brian Gallagher and Ian Elias. The two cars on the lead lap. And third through 11th are all on the tail end a lot of the field got caught on the tail end of the lead lap uh, as a result of when this caution came out but joe craig's going to lead the field to the green flag he is a lap down but here's brian gallagher the real leader getting around sapphire anderson there with ian elias right in tow the top two cars here trying to lap a bunch of these cars you see there there's lenny jacobs uh during that caution Louis Ballard lost his hood. We're not sure when that happened, uh, but he's reporting a mechanical failure. He pulls down to the, there to the inside, and uh, Brian Gallagher coming around. Oh, that's a lot of traffic, and uh, he's not going to lap a whole lot of cars, but we're going to have a caution here on lap 124. You saw that flag being displayed, and Louis Ballard would be the cause, trying to make his way into the pits for that mechanical failure. He clips something there. That spins the car out, and there's Josh Marshall. Big hit into the side of Louis Ballard. Both cars are going to be done for the day. Louis Ballard had a good run going, but see there, he pulls to the inside. He knows something's wrong. Gets into Ian Elias there, and then clips something that sends him, sends him spinning. Maybe a uh, suspension part broke, because you could hear that car bottom out there. Taking a look. Yeah, that car just snapped around on him. Something failed in the suspension. And that's a big hit into the door. But both drivers would be okay. And all of the cars here that you see got their lap back. They were on the tail end of the lead lap when the caution came out. And every single one of them is going to cycle around and get their laps back. But Kurt Pliskin, best running of the Accelerator Motorsports cars, would blow up under this caution. And uh, things are not looking good over at Accelerator Motorsports if they're going to get into a promotion spot. Brian Gallagher and Ian Elias up there. And look at this gaggle of lapped cars between Ian Elias in third place, Donnie Olson in the 65 car, who's having a hell of a run, I might add. Uh, but Brian Gallagher leads the field to the restart. Single file, Frank Azzaretto, the lapped car, running up in 10th place. 10th or 11th, I believe he's 11th between Gallagher and Elias, but then it's a whole host of lapped cars between them. And third place, Tom Wilson now, who got around Donnie Olson. But you can see there, the leaders are already entering turn two as Wilson's trying his best to get around all these lapped cars, but there's so many of them that they're blocking the track and it's tough for the lead lap cars to get around. And they have already opened, uh, Gallagher and Elias have opened up a six second lead with just 12 laps to go. So the race right now is between Gallagher and Elias, it looks like, as Preston Bell, uh, Stefan's racing, having an excellent performance here. They're running seventh, eighth, and I mean, sixth, eighth, and ninth right now, uh, these cars, and they're just punching way above their weight. The Tenere did not expect this car to handle as well as it has on this track, but it's done wonders, and oh! Oh, that's big news. Big trouble for Brian Gallagher. An oil leak on the 49. He almost hits the pit wall there. And that is his race falling apart. Your dominant car all race. Brian Gallagher is going to pit to repair an oil leak and lose a couple laps in the process. That hands the lead over to Ian Elias, who hadn't led all day in the Jaga Lake car right behind uh, Frank Azzaretto, who's on the tail end of the lead lap now. And Ian Elias basically being gifted this win he's got about a 10 second lead on the rest of the field if uh if cars can start slicing their way through this lap traffic they might be able to do something but brian gallagher comes out of the pits in 21st that is a heartbreak he was set to be in championship contention if he had won at cleveland but i don't even know if that's going to be the case looks like uh 
Lenny Jacobs has cleared up most of the lap traffic, but I think it's too little too late as coming around the final turn, Ian Elias is going to take his first win of the year at the Darlington Raceway. Taking a look at the results now, Lenny Jacobs was the only one of the lead lap cars to get through most of the lap traffic, but still couldn't get even close to Ian Elias, P2 for him. Cameron Taylor in the Troy Griffith 2006 Championship throwback scheme finishes in P3. He appears to be destined for a full-time ride. Steffens Racing, 4th, 6th, and 7th. A Hail Mary for them. Coming into the last race at Cleveland, it looks like they'll have a shot to stay in the series after all, after it appeared all hope was lost just a few races ago. Tom Wilson in his Chaparral Camaro throwback, P5, continuing a string of good performances for him. Barbara Burt didn't talk about her all day. P8 in that unsponsored Double B Motorsports car. Frank Azzaretto was the first car one lap down in ninth. Great run for him. He stayed up in the top 10 nearly all day after that pit strategy. Uh, Gamble, same thing with Joe Craig who finished P10. Alina Lazarev, a P11, good run for her. Dan Ferrey manages to bring Accelerator Motorsports home in the top 12, but is the only Accelerator Motorsports car in the top 20. Chris Benson in his Mesa Speedway racing throw back, uh, P13, Ben Worthington, P14 in the Grey Ghost, and you've got Tom Delgado, the only one of the GRL cars up in the top 15, and in the top 20, both of his teammates wrecked out late in the going. Clay Gibson in the SCRA scheme for Clayson Enterprises, P16 showing that he can adapt to these ovals, uh, Alex Phillips there in the road racing Corvette scheme, P17, good run for him after falling behind uh, early in the going. James Beverly, in his debut, tried five years to make a cup start, finally made his debut here. P18 in the 1982 championship scheme. Lewis Jones in 19th. And Brian Gallagher, what could have been if he had been able to win this race? He might uh, have had a shot at the championship, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. P20 for Brian Gallagher, and uh, I'm sure that's a 20th place filled with heartbreak for him. Now, taking a look at the point standings heading into the final race of the season, the Cleveland Grand Prix, a double points race, I may add. Ike Durbin leads over Ben Atkins by 40 points, and they are the only two drivers eligible for the championship. Ike Durbin, with a 40-point lead, needs to finish 15th or better at Cleveland to lock up the championship, no matter where Ben Atkins finishes. Brian Gallagher, third in the championship. If he had won today would just barely have enough points to be eligible to contend for the championship, but alas, that is not the case. He sits third, nine points above Ian Elias in eighth place. Gaspar D'Souza's late season implosion is complete. He sits ninth in the standings, 21 points behind Ian Elias. Mark Burt leads Rookie of the Year over H.J. Wheat Farmer and Sapphire Anderson, but it's not a locked position. He does not have it locked up yet. There is still going to be a Rookie of the Year battle come Cleveland. Andy Lambert, P13, uh, best of the ROG Motorsports cars. They're not completely safe yet. Uh, same thing with uh, Clayson Enterprises. Clayson Enterprises is far from being safe coming into Cleveland. We'll get to that here in just a second once we check the team standings. Frank Azzaretto sitting 20th in points. Big recovery for him throughout the season. And it uh, looks like he's going to finish up the year in the top 20 in points, uh, provided he can qualify for Cleveland. Finally, taking a look at the team standings, Manticore Engineering still controls the team standings by 102 points over Paloma Autosport now, who got around Griffith Motorsports for second. Team Ben Atkins holds almost a 200-point gap over Double B Motorsports in fifth. Zach Tech Motorsports team has gotten around Nicecock Racing for ninth, but... Stefan's Racing, with their Hail Mary, has pulled within 44 points of Lucas Motorsports for the final spot in next season's PCC Cup Series. With, a, with the Cleveland Grand Prix being a double points race, that is very easy to do with just one car. So by no means is anyone below, I'd argue about 8th place, close to being safe. That's all for this week in the PCC Cup Series. I'll catch you for the final time in the 2016 season at the Double Points Finale, the Cleveland Grand Prix.